Hi guys, Bada Bing here, thanks for joining me. Today we're going to be talking about the Alcon Spectre DR Gen 2. I've wanted one of these for a while, and I was going to pick up a clone version in Flat Dark Earth, knowing full well that for a genuine site would set me back nearly 2000 or possibly more. Although to make things worse on the other side of the spectrum, the only replicas that weren't black were finished in tan. And... gold. Seriously? Half giving up and half not, I kept an eye on eBay and other internet forum sales boards for months. After some time went by, I finally found one, the exact model I wanted, and the seller had only posted it for sale within minutes of me seeing it. What complete luck! Well, it was either luck or me spending every waking moment in the fetal position in a dark room with my face being illuminated with the iPad screen. Either way, it was mine, and here we are. Included with my purchase was its nylon carry case, instruction manual, and cleaning kit, complete with a small soft brush, patch cloth book, and cleaning solution. The seller was kind enough to get me two new batteries for it. Thanks mate. The optic is every bit as cool as I thought it would be. I've had some time behind the Clone Spectre DR in the past and it was nice and everything, but it was still a cheap knockoff and one shouldn't expect a lot for a clone site. One thing both optics share is indeed the weight. The Spectre DR is a heavy piece of kit. It's akin to attaching a brick to your rifle. Hell of a nice brick though. The lockup to the Picatinny rail is sets like concrete. The arm throw lever mounts are a great feature. Bear in mind the finish is somewhat worn as it is a second hand optic, therefore the paint is wearing thin on some areas and underneath the brown finish lies a lighter tan shade. It all adds to the charm though. The glass is perfect. The clarity is unparalleled. You get a wide field of view reminiscent of the most famous combat gun site, Trichicon's ACOGS, and it's simply wonderful. Gazing through the tube upon the reticle reminds you why it has such a high price tag. That, and as it's a site I can supply to military forces, they can charge whatever they damn well like. Major plus is the 1 to 4 power. Wow, that's cool. The one power does look a little weird upon first sight. It's strange to put my finger on it. Any iron sight, tack light, peck unit, or any accessory mounted in front appears to be two dimensional. It's weird. The swipe of the adjustment lever moves the lens block within the unit around and locks over to the other side with a clunk. This is where the clarity of the glass shines. The large objective lets in gallons of light, and the reticles are as sharp as a razor. It's beautiful. Fancier still is the illuminated reticle and the single red dot feature. The switch on the port side controls the brightness settings of those features. It also contains the battery. The battery is an unusual and awkward to find D1-3N. During the day on its highest setting, the full illuminated reticle, when it's viewed, is very dim. Only when night falls is where it comes into its own and equals its edge against the night. It especially works well under night vision goggles, whereas the single red dot may appear as a lens reflection under nods, the reticle is by far easier to pick up and translate onto the target. Using the single power and its red dot function, it's pretty much a name point comp M2 or M3, and those absolutely need no introduction. It's such a cool touch. It has five levels of brightness, the lower settings more than capable for low light or no light operation, and at its highest, the dot is still perfectly visible, even in the brightest of daylight conditions. I had this out for a weekend shooting, and a lot of the time, I left it in single power red dot mode. It worked great. I'd be happy to just have this instead of a separate zoom scope, red dot sights, and magnifier. Certainly cheaper when real firearm optics are concerned. I can understand why I see backup red dots piggyback to the system. It could be annoying throwing the lever back and forth when moving quickly through close quarters that open out to wide spaces and longer ranges. I think I'll keep my brick as low drag as I can. The Spectre offers large windage and elevation adjustment points. Elevation is a big wheel underneath the main tube housing. It has a locking block to stop it from being moved unintentionally. It's serrated with large teeth that assist with grip. For windage, you have a large rugged flat head screw point and calibrates with reassuring deep clunks. The backup iron sights, or as Alcon calls them, rain sights, aren't too bad. 
Not meant for anything in the name of precision, but they're providing a helpful bead on where you're generally aiming at, especially in moist conditions where the glass may have become soaked. Yes, moist. Both front and rear are able to be moved left or right sides of the scope to continue to fulfill their use even when backup red dots are installed. The business end of the sunshade has a large internal thread where Elkin's kill flash can be screwed on. Although I don't have one for it at this time, for a quick fix I mocked up a template, cut out a piece of clear polycarbonate sheet to protect the lens when I used it airsofting, secured with brown parcel tape. <laughs> well, it matched the colour of the site anyways. I love this site, I think it's uber cool. To have these awesome attributes cocooned within its rugged military shell to me is worth the thousand pounds I paid. Yes, it really is expensive, especially when all I use it for is flinging plastic BBs at people, followed by high-fiving my teammates and the occasional magnificent air grab. But what you also get for your money on this device is reassurance. Reassurance that it'll withstand even the most treacherous of weekend warrior catastrophes and all the other benefits of precise real optics. A little overkill for a toy gun? Yeah, perhaps, but why the hell not? You do whatever makes you happy, right? Hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, hit the like and subscribe. Any questions or comments, be my guest and leave them downstairs. Or shoot me a message on Facebook. Facebook.com forward slash Have a good one, and I'll catch you in a bit.